Hello everyone, I'm Mike Levin, and today we're going to talk about some programming languages. So when most people start out, they use whatever they're taught in school, or maybe what a friend tells them, or maybe what they find after a little bit of Googling. We're going to look at the, star the historical perspective, just so that you understand how your choices fit into the big picture. Starting from 1949, and then we're going to jump ahead to 1957. 1958, 1959, ahead 20 more years to 1969, 1989, and then two in 1995. That was a big year. And so we're going to start out with 1949 with a language called assembly. Its problem domain was anything. And I'm just going to quickly write these out for TRAN, for science, LISP, for math and lambda calculus, COBOL for business, C for writing Unix, Python for usability, Java for code that's portable between machines without a recompile, and JavaScript for the web. Now there are tons of other languages, but for the perspective I'm trying to give you, I'm going to focus on, on these. And uh, so assembler, problem domain, it was uh, the rise of computers, a lot of experimental hardware, not a lot of software support for writing code. And so the problem domain was anything, no matter what field you were in, you pretty much had to take up assembly to write code for it. And you had to be an expert at programming, not particularly your problem domain, because everything was written in more or less uh, binary code converted to hexadecimal for slightly better readability and words like move and add and divide, which corresponded directly to the machine code instructions. The inventor, you know, it's a little open-ended for each piece of hardware. Uh, we're gonna give honorary mention to Ada Lovelace, who came long before this, the daughter of uh, poet Lord Byron. Um, but she was the first uh, person to put algorithms into, uh, into a programmed machine, and that was the uh, Charles Babbage uh, difference engine. And it was a long time ago before computers really existed in their modern form, but she was a real pioneer of the field. And then uh, in 1957, IBM was now in this uh, supercomputer uh, mainframe business, really, mainframes, and their problem domain was science. They were number crunching. Problems that would take years to solve any other way. You feed all the numbers into the computer, you get the solution fast. And its inventor, or at least the person who proposed it, was John, John Backus at uh, IBM. And then Lisp is an interesting language. The problem domain is math, approximately math. Some might say lambda calculus, but basically it's uh, stupid computer tricks. You know, it's making a computer modify its own programming to solve a class of problems that is solvable in no other way. And it's a popular language for writing other languages. And all, of all the languages, it's uh, one of the only uh, old granddaddy ones that still survives today. Fortran still survives, uh, but Lisp is in much more popular use uh, in the form of Scheme and Clojure and a lot of other dialect languages, because Lisp is a great language for writing languages. And uh, its inventor was John McCarthy. And he was working with MIT when he did this. It's a real academic language. It was the star of their computer science, introduction to computer science class until recently when it was replaced by Python. So the very next year, 
What problem domain remains? We did anything. We did science. We did math. Well, business. COBOL was one of the first high-level languages to be accessible by non-computer people, people who are in business. Its inventor, well, it was a convention where they all got together, but the person who laid most of the foundation work for it, her name was Grace Hopper, working for a company called Remington. Um, but really, the uh, historically, Remington bought Univac, one of the first commercially available computers, and she did the work for Univac. Ten years passed by. Computers no longer occupy the whole floor of a building. They're now merely refrigerator size. And the next problem was to get rid of this customized language hardware connection where every language was really written for the hardware, almost like an operating system. So the problem domain was the porting porting of the operating system. And its inventor was Dennis Ritchie, one of the most prolific people in computer science today. Uh, he was working to, well, he's passed away, but his, uh, his uh, collaborator, Ken Thompson, is still uh, working in the industry. And uh, Ken Thompson did Unix, Dennis Ritchie did the C language, which Unix is written in, and uh, they did that while working for AT&T Bell Laboratories. So that is what makes this the modern granddaddy of all languages, because with a few exceptions like Lisp and Fortran, which are still in use today, all other languages that followed were written in C. Uh, operating systems are written in C, drivers are written in C. It's the lowest level of the high-ish level languages. And uh, it was still quite inaccessible. You had to be a career programmer to really master C. And to solve that problem, Python was written. And so its problem domain was really usability. Usability, accessibility, whatever you want to call it. A programming language that could take you as far as you want to go, but you didn't have to be a career programmer to get started. And it was also made very, very compatible with the C Unix world. It was deliberately made to appeal to C people and Unix people. And uh, its inventor was Guido Van Rosum. And he was working for a government institution in the Netherlands called CWI. And then in 1995, the next problem domain to be tackled, you remember portability was the problem domain of C, but that was portability with a recompile to get the Unix operating system onto different hardware. What about all the individual programs? Well, Java was written so that you could port individual programs. Let's call it porting times two. And uh, that was invented by James Gosling. And it was deliberately kept similar enough to C to be familiar to C programmers, but it took care of a lot of C's biggest pain points, like the ability to crash your whole computer so easily. Uh, Java uses a, a virtual machine formally to, as the way to execute Java code, and it has something called garbage collection, so you don't have to deal with a, one of the biggest pain points of C, which is keeping track of all the memory of the computer. And that was done for Sun, Sun Microsystems, recently bought by Oracle. And uh, that same year, given the massive popularity or, or hype surrounding Java, the language that was built into web browsers for the web, so the problem domain for JavaScript was the web, uh, Netscape built a language into uh, the Netscape browser that was designed to be familiar and rapidly embraced by, by people. So that's the only reason for Java in the name. JavaScript is not Java. 
it shares syntax, but the way the code executes is very different. And that was invented by, whoops, uh, let's see, what was that? That's Brendan, B-R-E-N-D-A-N, Brendan Ike, E-I-C-H. And that was done for Netscape. Well, everyone who's following my video tutorial so far knows that I intend to uh, teach everyone Python for its very virtue of usability and its intention to work together with C seamlessly. Java is very popular and appealing, but really I'm pulling in two dramatically different directions. C, because you simply can't get away from it in a lot of cases, uh, being the lowest level of the high level languages, that is uh, the original uh, language now in, in most compiling processes. Everything is ultimately written in C. And uh, JavaScript, again, because you can't get away from it. But C and JavaScript are not the best way to be super productive in the short term. If you're just doing web stuff, I would say JavaScript. If you are just doing system development, maybe operating systems and drivers, I would say C. But when you're trying to be a non-career programmer, and that's the important part. When programming is not your entire career, but you still want to have the ability to do useful, amazing things, that is where Python comes into the picture. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon.